Hello, and welcome to the shows we watch with me, Emily Johnston. And me, James King. Together, we are celebrating some of the greatest TV shows of all time. And we are getting ready to analyze The Analyst, because this week's show we watched is... Frasier. <laughs> yep, that's right. And there's a reboot on the horizon. Wow. But right now we're talking about the original show, which ran for 11 seasons on NBC. That's 264 episodes. And it won an incredible 37 Emmys. James, remind us of the setup. Okay, well, we remember Dr. Frasier Crane as part of the ensemble in Cheers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, one of the many customers of the Boston Bar, of course, uh, engaged to marry Diane at one point, but ended up marrying Lilith. So Cheers ends, his marriage ends in Boston, mm -hmm. and Frasier comes back to Seattle, where he grew up, to start a new career as a radio therapist on KACL. Uh, he has a wonderful apartment, great view, very classy lifestyle. <laughs> but that lifestyle is upset in episode one, when his gruff father Martin, who's this injured ex-cop, moves in with Frasier, moves into Frasier's wonderful home, uh, along with his pet dog, Eddie, and a frankly, shockingly bad green armchair. <laughs> um, so that's how Frasier begins. A spin-off, of course, from Cheers, which you watched, right? You watched Cheers? The whole yeah, of America loved, watched yeah, Cheers. Yeah, I think it was, it's kind of like you guys loving the Beatles. <laughs> Something you got to do. <laughs> like Go to a place where everybody knows your name. Yeah. And it is... I. I... I'll be real honest with you. Frasier was not something that I was... It was one of those shows that's like Friends in America because it was syndicated to so many places yeah. that you you would watch it. It would like be on a network where you switch on the TV and it was just there. So for me, I watched Frasier really in bits and pieces. I didn't watch it, in, you know, it, the way it was meant to be watched. And I think it is one of those shows where you can just duck in and duck out, yeah. just like Cheers. And it took me a while to realize that actually it was an offshoot of Cheers because it felt so different to me and who he was as a character and um and now i'm thinking about that thinking well that that is pretty interesting on a, a couple different levels but also there are and actually i kind of want to talk about this a little bit i want right. to go into the whole cheers thing yeah of course because i feel like it's a really big deal and actually i feel like it's not talked about enough che what cheers being a big deal well cheers being what was before fraser yeah because it's I, I suppose you have to do this if you're taking one of your cast members mm. and it, it was a big cast in, in Cheers yeah it's a huge ensemble you're taking one of them and giving them their own show is that you have to flesh them out don't you is that they're not necessarily going to be exactly the same as they were on the original show Frasier in Cheers is very different to Frasier on Frasier it feels very different and I actually had to go back and watch a few Cheers episodes to make sure I wasn't making this up in my mind <laughs> because I did feel like in my head, they are two different characters. And there yeah. is there are a few things, actually, that when you read about it, there are a few things that don't line up. Like, there's a moment, apparently, in Cheers, where Frasier tells Ted Danson's character that his dad has died. Right. And, obviously... <laughs> they retconned it. They retconned it. This is what everybody's doing. Yeah, and so they he said, oh, I was just mad at my dad. And then, and then it gets explained, and it actually gets addressed in later seasons in Frasier. Okay, yeah. So it gets... It it gets corrected, yeah. but they're just little bits and you just think, oh, how is this going to work out? But the nice thing and what I love about the show is they, while it's not clear, it is referenced. So they don't just completely forget about it. Yeah. They don't abandon it entirely. And actually every single member, living member of the Cheers cast appeared yeah. on Frasier except for Kirstie Alley. Yeah. And they're, they're great episodes actually when they come back briefly, like yeah. when Woody comes back. Yes. Um, Woody Harrison, you know, it's it's a really funny episode. So yeah. it is nice that occasionally they just nod back to that. I always, the problem I've always had, and it might be because I know Frasier better than Cheers, but F Frasier from his own TV show is not the kind of person who would hang out in a bar. No. I mean, his dad does. Yeah. And he, like McGinty's and Dukes and all these places that his dad goes. And Frasier's always a bit off about that. Yeah. He would prefer to go to a posh restaurant or a wine bar or something. Oh, so I so, have a theory on that. Oh, okay, go for it, because I'm I'm intrigued. It, it may be in Cheers, maybe I missed it, and yeah. there is a reason he hangs out in a bar, but I never feel that the Frasier from Seattle is the kind of guy who would hang out in a bar in Boston. Except for the fact that he's a long way from home, James. Oh, right, so he's basically <laughs> just looking for friends. Or maybe he's in some way channeling his, his upbringing and his dad. 
and yeah. this idea of wanting to like wanting to feel at home and knowing that that's what his dad would do to feel at home and that's yeah. what he saw and so he I don't think he would come to, I don't think he would ever admit that to his father but I think may and I'm totally making up the storyline But I love this head. because you are you're well as I said you're analyzing the analyst this is like <laughs> Dr Emily <laughs> Yes I'm here all week people <laughs> um, I'm listening <laughs> Come with your questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I really, I, I did think about that because I absolutely agree with you. And he's such a snob. He's such a snob. But it is one of those things where you think, could he be just missing home? Could he be missing his dad? And 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 that's why he's sitting in a bar. And actually, he fits in, but he doesn't fit in. So in Cheers, yes, he's part of the cast. He's a regular, but he never looks at home there. He always kind of looks out of place at the bar. You're kind of like, what's this guy doing here? Yeah. And maybe that's, I mean, apparently they did talk about him doing um, another show after it ended. And actually, incredibly, by the time Fraser ended in 2004, he had played that character for 20 years. Oh my God. 20 and years. And he's going to do it again. Is that the longest anyone's ever played a character? It must be on TV. Well, I think in like soap operas, there's probably characters. Who we don't count them. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, as sitcoms go, that's certainly got to be one of the longest, hasn't it? But yeah, because it, technically, yes, it's not one show. So you, yeah. But he is the same character. Same character, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, apart from those slight tweaks that we mentioned. And, and even his snobbishness that, that you said, um, although, I, you know, I can't imagine him as Frasier from the TV show Frasier hanging out in a bar, mm. that snobbishness is accentuated for the TV show Frasier. Yes. So it wasn't there as much in Cheers. No. Um, and actually the snobbishness is sort of really part of the TV show Frasier. It's like the heart and soul of it. it. He gets into so many scrapes, so many plot lines happen because of him being <laughs> a real snob. Um <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I think we, uh, I, I mean, I can watch it and, uh, and laugh at that because I think, well, I recognize some of those traits. You know, we all probably all have snobbish traits and we go, well, I can see what he's saying in that scene. But of course, he takes it too far and he, and he often gets his comeuppance because of that. And then you have Martin, who's the polar opposite. And this, of course, is classic a classic way to get any drama, isn't it? To put chalk and cheese together. It's um, so true, yeah. Martin is the, you know, the salt of the earth guy, the all-American guy, without any pretensions whatsoever. Uh, but I think actually the show sort of balances those. I don't think it necessarily favours one over the other. No. Uh, Martin is, you know, a, a lovable guy, but sometimes he feels a bit closed off as well and a bit small-minded. And Frasier, on the flip side, is also a bit closed off to, to to new ideas and to slightly more kind of down to earth yeah. everyday ideas uh, and actually the perfect sort of middle ground in the show is represented by Frasier's mum Martin's wife who we, who's dead who's long been dead and we never see yeah. and she's almost like this sort of ghostly figure this like angelic figure that they often reference as you know the ideal middle ground yeah because she was an intellectual, she was a scientist, she had those traits that Fraser and Niles have, but she also married Martin. And <laughs> also, you know, so and was down to earth and they got on great and it was a very happy relationship. Yeah. So she sort of represents the ideal, doesn't she? The middle ground. And I just love the fact that that because she's not around anymore, she's just this sort of hanging in the in the like in the ether. You well, know. it works because you can't, you, you can kind of blame things on her, Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, not to blame things on a dead woman, but it's, it just kind of, it works for the storyline because anything that you have a question about, you can yeah. kind of get, oh, well, you know, I bet it's down to the mom. Yeah. And, and that actually is kind of a clever thing that I'm surprised more people in TV don't do, but it, it does, you're right. It works brilliantly, but he is, I, I, I really kind of want to come back to what you're saying about how we talk about. Um, him being a snob and us having a little bit to identify, everyone having Absolutely. that little bit to identify. I have quite a lot to identify, to, identify, to be honest. <laughs> Way too much. Way too much. But I think you're so right. There is, there is, uh, and obviously this is why sitcoms work because yeah. they reflect us as human beings and we yeah. like to see that on TV, but they obviously press the button too far and it goes so far that sometimes you can watch the show and just, I found myself sometimes being like, it's too far. It's too far, guy. You've just, it's gone too much well, now. Also, they know, you know, Martin knows when Frasier's about to go too far. Yeah. And will say, Frasier, please do not go too far on this. Yeah. I know you're about to, 
you you know, this is about to kind of do your head in. Yeah. And he's he the cooler. warns him. Yeah. He's the cooler, but it doesn't yeah. work. No. Uh, two favorite episodes, <laughs> particularly, that I want to talk about where we see that in action. Um, one, <laughs> which is called Door Jam. This is season 10. The, I mean, this is so me. It's, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> so me and my wife, actually. Um, Frasier and Niles uh, are obsessed with getting membership into this new spa, um, and which they do. They kind of bluff their way in, but they get in. And they're having a great time in the spa. It's wonderful. They're so happy they're in. And then they hear that there's another level. There's a more <laughs> exclusive area of the spa. I and this. this eats away at them. They <laughs> cannot enjoy the current area that they're in because they know there's a better area. Yep. And then after that, an another better area. And, and it keeps going on and on. And I mean, I've, I'm sure I've been there so many times. Oh it's my. just the idea that the grass is always greener. The V, 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 I, P. Exactly. <laughs> if, it, if it exists, I have to be in there. I can't be happy with what I have. <laughs> so true. You know, and that's, that's, I suppose, he's a perfectionist, isn't he? And that's sort of the burden you have as a perfectionist. And then the other one, um, and you know, I've done a lot of radio, so I've probably been in a slightly similar position to this this is in season season seven um they're playing our song it's called and fraser has to come up with a new jingle for his show well he sort of volunteers to really and, yeah. it, and it's just you know it's it's kenny who's his boss it's just a throwaway comment just come yeah. up with something quick 10 seconds that what well, you know yeah and fraser begins this journey and it starts as as always going too far doing his head in, taking him over, and it just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. He hires a choir, an orchestra, yep. a narration, you know, and it just becomes this ridiculous thing that, of course, fails. I and mean, you totally expect it to, but you yeah. totally see how it's going. You, you see it. The minute they kind of introduce the idea of what the show is about, yeah. you automatically know where it's going. You know that that's yeah. going to happen. And a bit, but that's part of the joy of watching it, isn't yeah. it? Because we know his character and we like to see him go too far because it's funny and fail <laughs> and fail but fail in such a spectacular way it's because, true. He gives because it of all. this snobbishness because of these pretensions things have to be huge he can't yeah. just let things lie and have them kind of just commonplace and everyday and casual that's not what he's about is it I love that you have. I don't have a favorite episode. There are so many. I mean, how many was there? We talked about over two hundred. Yeah, over two hundred. I actually know. really racked my brain for that to try and think: Do I have a, even a moment that's a favorite? And it just wasn't. It's a great show, but it yeah. was kind of one of those things where I put on in the background, and and it's just. I think. Running. I think it's. I think it's. Despite all those awards that happened at the time, maybe yeah. now. It's taken for granted a little bit because it is just always on. Yeah. And you think, well, I won't watch it today because I'll watch it tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be on somewhere. Yeah. And, it's it'll, easy and it'll to surprise find. me with a random yeah. episode and you'll kind of laugh going, oh, I remember watching that the first time around. And and that's lovely. But yeah, I, I really, I did feel kind of bad that I was like, oh, I, ca I can't really think, is there one that stands out for me? And I did really rock my soul for this one and I just couldn't come up with it. Well, I, I'm sure you have a favorite character of the four legged variety that I will be talking about. Oh. You, I mean, very shortly. Yes. You are listening to the shows we watched. More Frasier coming up. And like I said, have you ever wondered what happened to Frasier's four legged friend? Well, four legged nemesis, really, <laughs> let's be honest. The answer's coming up. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. We talk about training our bodies all the time, but we rarely talk about training our brains. Now imagine you could train your brain to see solutions where you normally see problems. Such a shift in mindset usually requires a little bit of external help. For me, I've been able to achieve this sort of shift through therapy, which I have done for years and have talked openly about for years. But my life has changed a lot in the past decade and that I now exist with my career across time zones and continents. And it makes it very difficult to schedule face-to-face -face therapy. And this is where apps like BetterHelp have completely revolutionized therapy for everyone. With a simple survey, you get matched with the right therapist and you can switch as often as you want. There's no obligation to stay with the same person. But as long as you have an internet connection and the time, you can literally have therapy anywhere on the globe. When you wanna be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash TSWW today for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TSWW. 
www. This is the shows we watched with me, Emily Johnston. And me, James King. We are talking all things Frasier. I think we've m- mentioned Eddie the dog on this show before, I think. We have. Yeah, when we talk talking about Mad About You, wasn't it? Oh, we were yeah. talking about TV dogs. Yeah, the, the, the special <laughs> place that they hold in our hearts. Yeah. And also how hard it is to go back and watch shows where the dogs you know cannot possibly be alive well, anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, I may be imparting more of that kind of information. Oh, no, there may be James. some more obituaries coming your way. I take this. There's no Kleenex on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever happened to Eddie... He's dead, isn't he? Of course oh, he's dead. Uh, Go ahead and lead with that, why don't you? Real name, uh, Moose. Okay. Oh, cool name. Well, yeah, kind of cool, but why would you call Why would you call an animal another animal's name? Well, because he's so small that I think they probably wanted to give him a name that fits his personality, and it was big, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, fair enough. I'll go with that. Um, <laughs> you he, weren't expecting that. I, well, I wasn't. I didn't think you'd have an answer to that. There we go. I have an answer for everything, James. <laughs> uh, so uh, Moose died in June 2006, 15 years old, uh, but he was only the first, Eddie, because towards the end of the show's run, Moose was getting on a bit, and he was replaced by another uh, Jack Russell Terrier called Enzo. Do you know who Enzo was? No. Moose's son. What? (laughs) What? So, Eddie... Did nobody notice that they had replaced... Well, I can't see the join. I mean, I can't tell... I mean, I'm not a huge dog person, so I can't tell the difference. I can't tell when when it's Moose and when it's Enzo. Presumably, you know, one season ends with moose and then the yeah. next season would begin and it'll be ending. I'm trying to remember the markings and I can't remember them right now on the dog but I think yeah I, do. I guess if you're not really paying attention as long as he has some of the crazy characteristics yeah. you'll be fine. He can stare he can stare out <laughs> yeah. uh, Frasier that's what he mainly has Apparently to that's a genetic thing. But, but actually I read that I think it was the dog handler or something who said this that, that moose and his son Enzo actually hated each other and, and and what's brilliant is that obviously it's a show about fathers and sons that and the so fractious good. relationship that That's they have. So even the dogs, <laughs> even the dog, the father and son dogs didn't get on with each other. Oh, I would have loved that if that was actually part of the storyline somehow. Do you know what happened to Enzo? What happened? He's dead. What? They're all dead. <laughs> like this show was how many years old? He died in 2010, oh, poor bless Enzo. Him. I hope he had a good life. Did now, he do anything else in his career? Um, well, actually, there, there was a movie. I remember watching this. I think Kevin Bacon was in it called My Dog Skip. Do you remember that movie? No, from It was probably one, like probably. maybe late 90s, early noughties. And I think both of them were in that as well. I thought you were going to say, what was the black and white movie that won the Oscar? Oh, The Artist. Yeah, I thought that yeah. you were going to say that he went on to play. No, that would have been amazing. Yeah, no, I think I think, I think, think they were busy with Frasier. That kept them busy. They didn't have time Fair to do enough. other things, Emily. He's a know. busy in-demand yeah, dog. Yeah. Good for him. Um, and of course, we lost the great uh, John Mahoney as well, who played um, Martin yes. back in 2018. He was so brilliant. Um, and had a long career. I mean, he's been in loads of different things. I loved him in Say Anything in the, in the late yes. 80s, the, yes. the Cameron Crowe movie. so brilliant. So good. Um, but of course, very different to Frasier. And that's the gag. <laughs> I know that that's the gag. Yes. But, but do you sometimes think they're too different? I mean, even the way they speak, for example. Are we going to go down this road? I think we're going to have to. I okay. think it's the elephant in the room. I mean, it's a big, I feel we're taking a risk here. Yeah, and bearing in mind that Frasier is one of my favourite TV shows of all time, so I don't want people to think this is a criticism, but I think when when you watch it as many times as certainly I have and a lot of people have, Mm. you do start to look for things where you go, actually does that work mainly how do you all sound so different you all sound like you're from all like everyone every single person in the cast i mean i get it like his producer is mid uh, she's midwest right yeah roz yeah, yeah. roz is midwest D- dairy queen isn't she daphne is manchester well, yeah i mean that's that's a whole kind of well let's the wait no thing. we have yeah. to keep this in mind because yeah. i want to come back to her because obviously i'm american although i lived here for 20 years i'm horrible with accents so i really want to know if that is true but but I want to start with Fraser and Niles. Right. Because obviously they sound completely different than their dad. Like not even uh, uh, completely different universes. <laughs> and sometimes they sound British. And I'm a bit like, yeah. you're not British. And I don't see that. You, have you gone to boarding school in England? Like, Well, what they is- did. I think Fraser did go to uh, well, either Oxford or Cambridge briefly. But, I mean, but certainly, like it's for a year or something. It's not enough. For and then you he to went pick back to accent. America. Yeah. You, you maybe. So, have as it an here. American, are you saying that your ear can pick up different regional accents between Niles and Fraser? Yeah, they don't even line up 
with each other. Right. So it's that's why I'm. It, it's almost like one of them went to school in one part of England, and that's why I was like, did you spend all of your <laughs> schoolboy education in England, and one of you went to school in like Wales, <laughs> and the yeah. other one went to school? I think in, like, I remember googling <laughs> um, googling David Hyde Pierce to see if he was English. Okay. You know, because I agree with you. Is that uh, I, I think maybe you, you often see this in in American shows where you have to have someone who is sort of refined and, and they sound well British. to do. What they always that? sound English. I don't get like he, it's it almost okay. So it fits perfectly with his whole snobbery gig, yeah. right? So it fits because he has this voice that is so sound quite pretentious and yeah. above everyone around. And that's him. what we all sound like in England. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna get so railed for that. Um, no, I, I just, it just bugs me. I think it is the one thing that when I watch that show and you listen to the dad, and again, we can blame this on the mother that no longer exists because yeah. what do we know about her really? Yeah, and what was her accent? Yeah, exactly. Was she British? Because maybe that's the thing that they grew up with yeah, her, I don't, and she. I don't think she was. I don't think she was no. either. So I just don't really understand. And also, he lived in. Boston for a very long time and there's a very distinct accent that you pick up when you're in Boston and it only takes me a couple months before I'm talking like I live in Boston <laughs> you sound like ours. Mark Wahlberg <laughs> exactly but I just I, I really don't get it and if he picks up accents that quickly why didn't he pick up a Boston accent yeah but it, it just bugged me when I watched the show and okay so that's I'm, I've said it I don't need to say anymore it bugs me Tell me Daphne. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll get on to sort of other things about the female characters in a second. But with Daphne, um, actually Jane Leaves, I think, has apologised for her accent. Has she? Um, and I don't... Jane Leaves is English. Um, and I don't... She used to be worked with Benny Hill, I think. Um, Where is she from original? What's her original accent? She's, she's not from Manchester. I believe okay. she's southern okay. England. Manchester is northern England. Yeah. Um, but... I, I actually don't think the accent is that bad as a Manchester accent or as a northern accent. She just wanted it to be, I guess, kind of working class, for want of a better phrase. Mm. Um, but then you get her brothers come into it. Yeah. Robbie Coltrane plays one of her brothers, Richard E. Grant. Yeah. Um, uh, and they all have completely different accents. I was going to say, Richard E. Grant. Like, I know. Not... And Robbie Coltrane is is clearly Scottish. So Hagrid, yeah. we know him. I love yeah. him as Hagrid from, from Harry Potter. But he's very Scottish. Yeah. And does the does the uh, the character when he plays Daphne's brother, he's Scottish. And the joke is that he's just garbling, that no one can understand what he's saying. But it's very clearly Scottish. Maybe he went away to Scotland for a few years. But I then Richard know. E. Grant, he's a very well spoken. Well, he Englishman. sounds very London to me, yeah, Richard E. Grant. Southern. Yeah. yeah. And there's even an actor, I can't remember what he's called, um, who's another brother. He's an Australian actor. What? And, they threw an Australian But, but in he there. does a Cockney accent, so he doesn't okay. play Australian, but he does Cockney. But none of this adds up unless Daphne's brothers have all just gone off to different parts of, of England. To I think it adds up to the fact that they went, nobody in America is going to know <laughs> yeah. what the heck anybody sounds like. So we can throw every accent that has a little bit of a flair that makes everybody go, ooh, a foreigner, and we'll be happy. Because yes. it is true, actually. I have friends that come over and they'll sit next to a Kiwi, an Australian, a Londoner, and somebody from Northern Ireland, and they'll just think that they're all from the same place i'm like yeah. these are completely different <laughs> accents what is happening and i might not be able to tell you where someone is from in england yes. but i can definitely tell you if they're not from england if they're from ireland or scotland or australia or south africa yeah. or new zealand and i think maybe yeah I, I maybe they just kind of thought the american public was too stupid to notice and it's anthony lapaglia he's the Auss aussie guy who played okay. her brother and, and did it as a cockney um, so again, it's I love Frasier, one of my favorite shows, but I think because it's so much part of the furniture, yeah. because I personally have seen it so many times, these things you start to really pick at it. Yeah, um, of and also I have similar things with with actually the female characters, so with Roz um, and with Daphne, because I'm not. I think even in the 90s, I watched those characters and just bristled a little bit at some of their treatment. Certainly in the early seasons, they do change as the, the seasons go on. As and the world changes. As the world changes. Yeah. But also, I guess, as their characters grow up. I mean, Daphne, who starts off as uh, as Martin's, you know, live-in nurse, yeah. um, becomes much more than that and becomes part of the family and, you know, has a relationship with Niles. But she starts, I mean, she starts off as a psychic. That's kind of the gag, isn't it? That she's psychic. Yeah. Uh, and a bit, uh, away with the fairies and a bit bitsy 
and they do dilute that. Yeah, they the really goes, do. Which is good because quite quickly, actually, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, because I think first of all, I think the joke wears thin quite quickly. Yeah. But also, um, it's she's just a she's sort of disparaged a little bit by the brothers who just and and by the audience, the jokes are on her a lot yeah. of the time when she's being psychic. Uh, and then with Roz, I mean, it's it's a tough one with Roz because actually, you can watch it and go. Ross is amazing because she's a very sexually confident woman. Brilliant. Yeah. But in terms of the TV show, she's also the butt of a lot of jokes. And it's kind about of sad. That. Yeah. It actually ends up being sad. And I'm not sure if that's because I'm a woman who's also single. <laughs> well, because she because she never finds love, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. But also because she just keeps striking out. Yeah. And there's hope and then there's disappointment. And actually that treatment of that whole situation while we laugh at it is you watch it again and you kind of think, yeah, that is a little sad the way that that's, uh, yeah. she's the butt of a joke. Because yeah, of it. absolutely. And, and, you know, Frasier and Niles aren't perfect, but they're the ones who like to, to you know, essentially uh, shame her in terms of her Which behavior. Which I find hilarious coming from those two. <laughs> yeah, and Frasier like dates all kinds of people and he, he's so punching above his weight on most occasions. And Niles is just clearly in love with someone. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's just, the whole thing is hilarious. That, yeah. And actually that's what I mean by as the world changes because if you look back at, you're still in a time period where maybe things were a little different and as yeah. things started to evolve, uh, the show evolved with it. I feel yeah. A bit. Well, Daphne definitely evolved, but uh, I I I just think Roz, who no. you know, and Fraser was always at p- pains to point out that she was a great producer, a great career woman, you know, really smart, and she's a brilliant character. And Perry Gilpin, who played her, I think is fantastic. She is, yeah. But um, there is I, just the the gags about her sex life, are j- just rile me a bit, and I I don't much. yeah. I suppose on the plus side, both Daphne and Roz also ridicule Frasier and Niles they they absolutely love to you know burst their pretensions yeah. so they're 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 smart they're funny they're witty people but just those little quips about about Rosa's sex life and and it does make me wonder if the you know they're this reboot on the horizon how is it going to be in today's climate and and how is it going to change and that's fascinating yeah. actually yeah what what would how would we look at a character like Ros in 2022 well I think the thing that bugged me in particular about Ros is she's seen as a bit of a ball buster yeah but then there's a sad tinge to the fact that she is that. So it's not female empowerment, really, because she is. She is. She is someone who will stick up for herself. She's someone. Yeah. She's like, I'm happy and well, happy and sad. But you know, I can take care of myself. I can do this on my own. Obviously, I, I want to have a love life, whatever. But she's like, she should have been this empowered female character and instead she had two men that kind of kept putting her in her place in a way that wasn't a career aspect but by Mm. this this love life that was told throughout the story yeah so it's a it's an odd chemistry there yeah and it it, i agree when you go back and you watch it is when you don't really see it the first time and then you go back and you watch it again you're like ooh, there's a little bit of something sour here yeah this is the joy of going back to these 90s shows isn't it Joy and pain. Exactly. <laughs> and that that could be the tagline for the show. The shows we watched, joy and pain. <laughs> That's so sad. But go back and watch it. It's great. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. It's literally one of my favorite shows. So, so good. Um, Emily, thank you so much. Thank you, James. The Shows We Watched is a production of Diversion Audio. If you'd like to send us an email, a voicemail, a comment, an idea for a show, or you just want to say hi, our email address is theshowswewatched at gmail.com. That's theshowswewatched at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and may use your message in a future show. But you can also get in touch with us on social at the shows we watched or visit theshowswewatched.com. And you can find me at Emily Jane Johnston and James at James King Movies. This season was written, researched, and hosted by me, James King, along with my co host, Emily Johnston. And our supervising producer and sound mixer is Mark Francis, concept by John Tuttle, head of marketing is Erica Farmer, and the original theme music is by Tyler Cash. The shows we watched was recorded at Vox Pod Studios in London, and our executive producers are Jacob Bronstein. Mark Francis and Scott Waxman for Diversion Audio. Mm-hmm.